Welcome to the Aramir Roundtable. Today is the 20th of October, uh, 2021. So welcome everyone. Uh, I have a good friend, uh, Rick Van Buren with me, with Travis from uh, TradeMiner Software. We're gonna show the software and then Rick will show how he uses it. So welcome guys, nice to have you here. Hello. Thanks hey, for having us. Good to be here, Tom. Anything okay. I can do to help you guys? Yeah, no. you're you're always great, Rick. So appreciate being here. Um, before we get too far into it, just the normal disclosure that Aramir is not a broker, dealer, or an investment advisor. It's for educational purposes only. Uh, options, futures, bonds, and currencies all involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And if you want to read the whole thing, it's on the bottom of any of our web pages. And uh, if you're watching the recording, just pause it and read the whole thing. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, Travis, you probably need to share your screen so we can uh, see what you're referring yeah. to. Perfect. Thank you. Let me pull that up. OK, so hopefully you guys can, can see my screen. Um, we do. Yep. Great. So uh, like Tom said, I'm with Trade Miner. We're, Trade Miner is one of our products that we offer. We're Gecko Software. We're based here in northern Utah. Uh, we've been in business for about 20 years, um, and Trade Miner um, has been on the market for uh, about 20 years. Uh, the actual first 10 years, so how Trade Miner got started is it was actually we created it for a, a conglomerate company out of Idaho, um, and for the first 10 years, it actually wasn't available to the public um, because of an agreement that we had with them. Um, so it's been on the market now uh, for a a uh, little over 10 years uh, where we've been able to sell it uh, to the general public. So what it is, is it's a seasonal scanner uh, for you to be able to go and, and pull uh, the seasonality trends um, based off of either a month or you can uh, scan it by um, uh, symbols. So what I've got here is, is our product Trade Miner Pro. Um, Rick's going to go into more detail. I'll just show you a little bit about it. Um, uh, the seasonality uh, one that I've got right now is uh, Hershey, um, and I'll just show you a little bit of the, the seasonality. Um, and what it does. So here's the information that it pulls. So I've, I've selected just Hershey just to give you an idea of the seasonality. So from 1989 uh, through now, um, it has won 94% of the time. Uh, from February 1st and to close on February 23rd with an average of 5% profit. So um, it's, a, it's a great tool to, to show you what's, what's uh, happened over time um, on certain stocks. And as Rick can show you, and, and I can attest as well, um, not only do I use it to purchase stocks, but I also do it for my option trades as well. Um, but that's just a, a quick overview. I know Rick's gonna go into more detail. Um, so I'll actually stop sharing and I will let Rick take over. And then if we have questions at the end, I'd be happy to answer any questions that we have on it. Yeah, hello everybody. Can you hear me okay? We can. Okay, let me go into sharing my screen here. I'm gonna pull up Trade Miner and then let me get into here. Uh, and let me, okay, let's see if I can find it. There we go. Um, so here's the deal, guys. Everybody, you know, I've been with uh, Tom, you know, trading as a as a participant and, you know, learning from Tom and his organization way back when. I mean, probably close to eight, nine, ten years now, Tom, I'm guessing. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah, so I appreciate everything. I think I've really honed my options trading skills and basically discipline in trading, you know, using uh, <laughs> the teachings of Tom and the people that are associated with Aeromir. Um, let me tell you what I did. I, I've been looking for a seasonality. I mean, I, I basically trade three different styles, four different styles. I have a long-term portfolio, which is basically ETFs, which I generally rebalance on a monthly, quarterly, maybe annual basis. And then I was also looking for those quick hits where I could go out and trade options, um, take advantage of seasonality, but I could not find anything. Searched and searched and searched for it. And uh, somehow I was steered over to Trade Miner. And I actually had a son who was even trying to build me um, a seasonality type of trading system. And we you know, kept going on it and it worked pretty good, but it just did not have the same kind of details. I mean, there's a lot of information in Trade Miner that I think is really of great value. Um, for, you know, for the price, it's just incredible. 
Uh, if you trade stocks, it works great for seasonality. If you trade options, well, again, if you trade options, you'll have to kind of sell, you know, trader choice type things. Um, I have ma made this thing into an options type of trading system. And that's where you have to have some options experience. You don't have to be a genius at options trading, but just know what your risk tolerance is. Um, I'm going to show you from today, this is real data year today performance. And I'm going to show you this real quick on my screen if I can pull it up. So I have been trading this. I'm not, this is not fiction. Can you see my screen right now? Uh, we're looking at the Trade Miner Pro screen. Okay, so you can't see what I brought up from Option View. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, let me pull this open here. Um, I got to go back to share screen. Um, this is. Yeah, you can stop your share and then reshare. Okay, stop share, and then I will reshare. And I want to show you um, what I've got here. Okay, let's try that one. Okay, yep. there hang we go. on one second. I got a phone ringing here. I've got a, hang on one second. Your phone is ringing. We got two Zoom meetings going on at once here in this house. <laughs> okay. So, so can you like Zoom? Yeah. yeah. Can you see my screen now? I do reports. Okay. So if you look, this is an option that's uh, Explore Register. This is, I've actually put on 265 trades. That seems like a lot. And I've got a PL since the first of the year of 17,600. Now you have to understand, these are really small trades most of the time. I'm trading you know, maybe a max risk of anywhere from $500 to $2,000. But you can see on January, you know, you have your wins and losses. You have to decide how you want to lose something. But the bottom line is, um, I've got about a 70% win rate uh, using Trade Miner, and these are all using chop uh, options. And generally, you know, like you look at J July, um, it was a pretty good month. You can see there, you know, there's a lot of base hits in there. You know, I'm not looking for grand slams. What I generally do, you guys, is I will look at 30 delta short strikes. And now I'm going to go back to my other screen and show you an example of what I do, my scans. On my scans, I will look at out 30 days. If, can you see this here where I've Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll generally search 90% profitability and I'll look at 30 to 60 days. And these are actually trading days, not calendar days. So we're looking out anywhere from a month and a half to three months that I'm looking for 90% win rate. I'm at least 10 years of history. And I, and basically I'll run a search on October right now. And you can see, and I'm going to see what my settings, you, there's so many tools in here. Travis can tell you about it, but um, you can create your own criteria and like you can say i want i want to pick uh, out of a pick out of what is it here hang on a second i've got to go to new i think you're looking at like 2000 or 3000 different stocks that are built into your database let's just see yeah 2165 stocks you can then go up here and say i want to search a criteria i want to look at price i want to say i want to look at everything that's greater than or equal to let's say $25 a share. I want to look at volume. Now, if I'm going to run options, I want to have, um, okay, let's see, less than or e greater than or equal to, let's say anything greater than a million shares. And I want it to be optionable. So what you do is you hit this button here and it'll select your symbols and it comes up with 563 symbols. You can then create a group and then search that group and you can refine it. You can add your own symbols. Um, what I tend to do is I look at things that are like greater than $25 with high volume because it means you have good liquidity. Then I'll look at things that are $50 or greater and I'll lower my volume down to maybe a half million or a hundred thousand shares a day because you're searching for things that have good liquidity when you're trading options. So I'm just going to leave this and go into one of my option scans and I'm going to say this is... I'm going to look at, I think this is options too. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and do a search. And it's automatically preset to go to that options screen, options two. This is ones I 
that I have set up. And I'll run a scan for October. And this is between 30 and 60 days. And again, you have to have a little bit of experience on trade, you know, trading options, but you don't have to be creating complex option strategies. You can do straight put credits, credit spreads or call debit spreads. And in a market like this, where we've had some uncertainty, I will actually trade um, asymmetric butterflies that give you a little more room to be right. So I look at this and I, I look at these scores. Now this is where Travis needs to step in. They've got a scoring system and it says uh, a score of five, the higher the score, the max score is five. And that's based on their own secret sauce. Um, and, and there's also a probability. You can look, there's a high probability, low probability. And I think they're using data. And this is where Travis needs to step in and say, you know, what the score and the probabilities are referring to. Yeah, so that's the, the highest amount of profit with the lowest amount of risk is essentially what, what those are going off of for you. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an example. So what you do is you choose what you want. I tend to look at things that only have a score of four or above. And you'll see from month to month that you may get a ton of fives for your scan, depending on what you set as your designated 30 or 60 days or you know 10 to 25 days. Um, and you, you'll get a variation in the number of hits based on seasonality. But now I'm gonna pop over to the next screen. Now, after you transfer them, what you do as you search them, you choose what you want. I got these little arrows picked. Then you add to step two. And I've done that already. You look over here at step two and this moves it into your neural network now. Now, this is real data, everyone. Okay, so I, I kind of sort, you can sort it by date and score. So this is for the month of October. So here's what have ha would have happened. And, you know, okay, on um, the 1st of October, and generally it's at the market open. I always give it 15 to 20 minutes before the market settles out. They're telling you an end date of December 7th. So more than likely, I would have used the options expiration of December 17th, which is the monthly. Now, some of these things have weekly options, and I try to choose the options that are closest to the um, expiration of this end date. As you can see, if you would trade the CBOE from October 1st to December 7th over the last 10 years, you got a high probability and it's showing you have 100% win rate. You come down here and you got this register that actually shows real data. Um, now, Travis, this has always confused me a little bit, but it shows October 21st to December 7th. And that right there is not real. You got a begin date and end date. You see what I'm saying? It shouldn't be showing that yet. Yeah. Can you explain why I see that? Periodically, I will see something like that. Sorry, just one sec. Okay. But anyway, what it's showing, and this, this is real now, is that if we had entered this trade, now this is again for stock, not for options, you would be up $63 and it shows your open and close price, your drawdown, and this is as of the close last night, okay? And you can actually sort. Now, these are all trades and I'm in many of these right now with options. Some are doing quite well, like Northern Trust. Um, I would have, I put a January 17th trade on this. And you can see it's up $800. And this is based on $5,000 of capital. And that's based on buying stock. Now, if you roll down here, you can see where it's, yesterday, as of yesterday, if you got into People's United Financial, you'd be up $112 as of the close last night when you entered. You can actually, these are sortable. You can sort and say, where are my worst trades right now? And so what I do a lot of times, if I don't get a trade, and it's a high probability trade, I will then go in and look at something that I hadn't entered and, and I look for a drawdown. And this is a December, okay, this is Carnival. You know, it doesn't surprise you that you got a lot of volatility in the, the cruise lines right now. But if you look at this, it's got a 91% win rate over 11 years from October to December 22nd. I would have likely gone into probably a December 17th option expiration on this one. 
and you're down now $368. So if you want to take a shot, do like an asymmetric butterfly right around the market and then work that fly to, you know, extract profit as theta comes up. So I've been, I've been very successful with this. It's not too complicated. Um, Tom, any comment or questions on this in your, your respect? Well, let's see, you said you look for about a short delta of about 30 and you're 70% yeah. win, so that kind of makes sense. Let me find, let me see if I can find something right now that I'm in and I'll show you how I did the entry, okay? Um, hang on one hey, second, Rick, I gotta... Um, sorry, this is Travis uh, cutting in. When you're talking about, sorry, I had a coughing attack, but when you're coughing or when you're looking at this end date here down at the bottom, uh, yes. that December 22nd, that's just showing what the end date of the trade will be. Okay. So it's, it's showing it in the future and it might vary a little bit from what you're seeing up top because of the actual trading days this year. Okay, but it doesn't, it's not included in, it doesn't falsify your data or anything like that. No, no, it's just showing current what's going on and then that'll be the end day of, of the trade. Okay, okay. So what I'm doing here, I'm gonna open up one. Here, here is an actually a trade that I'm in right now. I'm gonna show you my screen. This is a Microsoft trade and you're probably all gonna say, oh, you know, Microsoft, that's for sure going to be a winner. Well, I mean, this is just an example of what I did enter. Um, this is Option Net Explorer. I think many of you are familiar with it. This is a very small trade, relatively speaking. It's, uh, let me show you my register um, and I'll show you what Trade Miner said. Okay, I entered this trade on August 26th when Trade Miner said, um, you know, this is the date to enter it. And I went with a November 21st expiration. And I just did a simple put credit spread. I felt comfortable with Microsoft. I mean, it, it generally is pretty reliable. And I didn't feel I had to do any kind of funny asymmetric flies or anything like that. But let me take you back to the date and see if I'm if I'm being accurate about when I entered and, and you know the deltas and everything. Let's see if I can get into it. 207. Okay. When I entered the trade. Yeah, I mean, I had a, look here on the, the left-hand side, I had a 30 delta, 285 strike, 280, and trade miner indicated that this was a high probability trade. And so I said, oh, I'm, I'm willing to risk, you know, 1150 bucks to make, you know, what, $400? And I may have even added more to the trade. I think I did. I, I actually added two more strikes in the 23rd because it looked like an opportunity. So then I'll move to the next... Uh, and that's the beauty of options. You can add more things. So I added um, two more. I think on a, on a down day where the market hadn't moved that much, I added two more put credit spreads. So now I increased my margin to 1,950. But now the, the risk reward, I always look for a minimum of 25% on my, on my um, return on capital. So, and now you can just move it to live mode and you'll see where we are. And uh, I'm up $332, 17%. Generally, when I can get 85% of my max profit on a trade, I'll close it off. Um, you know, why? I mean, I'll just use that margin and go somewhere else. So this is an example. Um, now, let me see if I can find something else that I'm in right now. Um, and, you know, how I'm trading it. Okay, like I'm in, I, hopefully this will show up when I do this. And what I will do a lot of times is I will actually um, put on butterflies that are hedges. Now, can you see the, the Royal Caribbean that I'm in right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, what I did, I call this a TM hedge, uh, especially when I'm entering trades that are three to four months out, like on straight put credit spreads. I want to hedge them. And I want to hedge them so that if I'm wrong, I can pin it behind it. So this trade here is just simply a hedge um, whereby I put on a butterfly under the market for Royal Caribbean um, to protect myself. Now this is gonna expire this week. So I'm gonna more than likely expire with about a $60 loss. But when I put it on, I've been in for 42 days, it was a hedge against other trades. And I actually have a November 26 hedge as well. And you can see that it moved on me. I've been in this for six days, but I said, you know what? I'm going to put this on because I think 
because of the market moving higher, I think we're going to move into the end of the year. We're going to go higher. I'll risk $544. I put a, a two by, what is it, a 253 um, asymmetric fly on. And I will look to work this thing where I will bring up the tails as time goes on and try to pin this thing, you know, for a nice profit. But here is the actual trade that I put on on August 30th using trade miner. I actually put this on as an asymmetric fly because I was not comfortable with the cruise lines. Um, I felt that there was going to be some reversion. Now, if you look at this thing, I've been in it for 51 days. It's a small trade, $400. But here's the risk reward, you guys. My upper expiration line is going to make 25%. I, if this thing reverts back going into um, January, I could pin this thing for about a 200% profit or close to it. But this is this is the kind of stuff I do is that I, I look at the 30 to, you know, the 90 days out, put those trades on, and then I will backfill with hedges that potentially are pinpoints and to protect that 90 day trade. Now this gets more complex. I mean, you can just stay really simple and just do put credit spreads and probably be very successful. And so I'm gonna show you the account register on my um, trade miner. So hang on a second here. I'm gonna, I mean, kind of interesting, sharing screens, this thing kind of reverts back and forth. You gotta, um, oh. Are they on different screens? And yeah, they're computer? different screens. Let me, uh, I mean, you could just share now. one screen and then just move the software okay, back. Okay, I'm gonna forward. stop sharing and now I'm gonna move my screen over to trade miner again, if that's okay. Um, now, this is the accounting portion. This now, this isn't all real data. This is all back tested data based on you know. I'm constantly refining things with trade monitor because there's so many things you can do and say, well, how would I would have traded this? Oh, Rick, so, we're not seeing your screen right now. Okay, I will go ahead and share that now if I can. Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. Okay. Sorry, I'm not real good about this. No problem. Okay, here we go. So if you go, okay, you start with the search button go to the neural network, you then transfer to your portfolio where you move it into your portfolio and then you basically set it over to your accounting after you close the trade. So this is the using $5,000 per trade if you're buying stock. From the beginning of the year, if you would have taken these trades on this algorithms that I'm running, you'd be up $55,000 and you would have put on 217 trades. And this shows you the monthly of how you would have done using this scan. Like this is the 30, 60 day, I think. And actually some of it was 10 and 25 mixed in there with it. But you can see the performance. And here's your histogram or your, your curve on profitability. And you can look at this and scan this and say, okay, well, what was my, my biggest profit, you could say I made, you know, on this Dexchem, if you had entered May 24th, got out August 16th. Again, this is for buying stock. This is your profitable. And you can roll down and you see where you start losing, you know, down to where you would have lost money if you had hung in with the trade. There's a lot of profit there going on on that far column. And then the red there, that's the losers. And I calculated, I think it's about a 70% win rate. Um, does that sound right about Travis and based on what you guys see as well? Yeah. So now, Tom, are there any questions in the chat as far as what people are saying or thinking about this? And am I going too fast? Uh, I don't think you're going too fast. Uh, just there was a comment about uh, commodities have well-known seasonals that stocks are random 50-50 day-to-day. Uh, why do you believe stocks have non-random seasonals? And Travis answered that. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know if you want to go into a little bit more detail, Travis. Yeah, I mean, if you go back uh, to Rick's search, which is where he's at now, looking at the month of October, uh, a lot of stocks do have uh, a seasonality trend. Um, and like I said in the, in the chat, we also, I mean, we do have it for futures and Forex. Uh, we trade uh, here in stocks, futures and Forex. Uh, right now, we're just giving the example of stocks, but um, there are seasonality trends for sure in stocks. Um, and Hershey's is uh, by far one of the greatest examples of since 1989, uh, starting in 
the first of February, it's gone up on average of 5% or over 94% of the time uh, since 1989. So there definitely are uh, some pretty strong seasonal trends within the stock market um, on, uh, yeah, on a bunch of different stocks. So. And it, the other thing too, this goes both on a bearish mode and a bullish mode. So you can actually trade, like I was doing some gold, um, you know, the, what are the, the nugget miner NUGT that it was bearish. And I actually made money on that. And it tells you right here, it's bearish going into the end of December. There's a hundred percent win rate over 10 years. And um, I actually closed that one early because I saw gold started to reverse on us. But um, hey, again, hey, there's a lot of trader choice in here as well. There was another question for you. Um, it oh. said, uh, up by, it said, Rick, you set up by 55,000. What was the planned capital? Okay. So, so how many, how many open $5,000 trades would you have, I guess? Well, my, my thing is, is that I'm not really 5,000 because again, this is where trader choice is. And I'm still experimenting with it. I'm probably putting on anywhere from 500 to $2,000 per trade. And I will take everything I can take. If I have 30 trades on, I'll take them because I'm not using that much capital. I'm using this as a basis just to see what success rates are on, um, on um, you know, how trade miner is actually performing in the real world versus the back test. And what I'm trying to emphasize is that it seems to be a pretty, pretty dang accurate. Now, when you get market conniptions, like you know, if you look at March of 2020 or February of March, I mean, things go to hell in a handbasket. That's where you have to use your own you know, stomach to say, how much can I take down? I, I generally, if I'm down 15, 20%, I'll just exit a trade. Um, but as far as working capital, it's anywhere from 500 to 2000 a trade. And it also depends upon how the market is going. I subscribe to a couple other things that help me understand where I think market direction is going and then based on my own experience. But it's a work in progress, everyone. Everybody has to find their own style of trading. This is just a very small component of what I do. The brunt of most of my portfolios are in long-term held positions. I use options tradings in you know, the indexes to hedge my trades. And a lot of times I lose money on my hedges because the upper expiration line on my hedges are underwater a small amount. But when you get reversion on a trade, not necessarily a black swan event, I mean, I get a hundred to one payout. So. What that does, if you look at a long-term you know, trend on the S&P, it's always kind of moving up, but you get this chip chop like a saw blade. What I try to do is just basically smooth out those drawdowns. And this is just one more tool in the toolbox with Trade Miner because I can use seasonality in it and it hones my skills in terms of adjustments and trading. You don't have to throw a lot of money at these trades. I mean, for I would not put 50 grand into a trade here. I'm not that stupid or brave. So again, it's just one more little thing that you can chip away at trying to get advantage of the market. I think so I, uh, I was I was thinking about that question about the fifty five thousand. How many trades was that? It was over two hundred, oh, wasn't it? Yeah, let me look. Um, okay, there were two hundred seventeen trades, and this was based on five thousand dollars per trade. Okay, and that's for this year to date. Right for this year to date. So if and you divide like, it by say nine months, um, that would be what like twenty three trades open at, at no one time probably yeah. maybe so plus or minus a little times, bit five so maybe hundred hundred twenty five thousand yeah open for time yeah yeah that's not bad I mean if you're risking at one time one hundred fifteen thousand and I guess you can divide the fifty five by nine right oh the number of trades yeah yeah. So oh, or unless you want to do it per month, yeah. You're making like six thousand, probably six thousand on average per month, risking what about a hundred thousand or something like that. So you're looking at what six percent a month, maybe Tom? Yeah, probably five, six percent range. That's a right. reasonable and that's, guess. That's, that's pure just the trade underlying. Line. Yeah. That's not options. See, I'm just looking at success rate and seasonality and see if I can find an edge. So so Travis, you said you had uh, futures and forex. Uh, have you personally used uh, either of those, or do you just focus on stocks? So I have used futures as well, um, and the futures, uh, like was mentioned before, there's there's definitely some some big trends that happen in in futures. 
um, uh, and the stocks are cyclical, just like the, the commodities. They both they both have their trends. So um, I, I I do personally use it in futures as well, and it's it's worked out quite well. So. Now, what kind of trading do you do? You, you said you do some option trading. I do, yeah. So, I mean, I've I've spoken to Rick. I actually spoke to him. Oh, it was probably six months ago, and he told me about this, and I started putting some some <laughs> trades on with the options. Um, and my account grew. I've I've gone up about seventeen percent since doing that. Um, and then I do buy and hold as well. So in in the stocks, um, and I'll use this. And something that we like to say here at at uh, Gecko Software is. Um, trade miner may not be the end all be all, but it, it's either, it's definitely the first thing I go to, and then I'll use my charting analysis and things as well, um, to be able to help make those decisions. But, um, I definitely use it in every one of my trades that I get into. So when you're doing your option trades, Travis, what kind of thing are you doing? Like verticals or butterflies or what kind of spreads are you putting on or just maybe a, just a single yeah, option. So, so for me, it's it's pretty pretty straightforward. A, a lot of synthetic longs uh, and synthetic shorts. So, um, nothing too too fancy or crazy. Um, I'm, so, just buy a call, sell a put kind of thing. A lot of times, yeah. Yep. And what I try to do is I'll balance out uh, how many calls and puts I have at the same time, um, just to uh, keep everything kind of even. If that makes sense in in my portfolio, sure. but. Yep. Okay, so I wanted to try to pull something up with you guys to see how you can try to save a trade. Um, let me hang on one second. I'm going to pull up a trade that I have in Starbucks, and um, and I, I don't want to get into a lot here. I don't want to take too much of your time because there may be more Travis wants to talk about. But I'm going to try to do a new share here. Um, okay, I think this is the one. This is Starbucks, and I entered this on August 10th using, again, Trade Miner, and this was a trade that's supposed to go to December. Um, set, well, it's the expiration, or the, the trade for Trade Miner said uh, December 7th, but I used the 17th of December as my expiration. Um, if you look back on August 10th, August 10th, um, Starbucks was trading at $116 a share. So it has dipped as low as 110 since then. And so you can say that this asymmetric butterfly I was in, and again, this is where you have to choose. You know, I look, I'm, a, I'm I really am a visual person looking at charts. And I just thought, well, you know, Starbucks, they say it's got a big win rate, but I was thinking, you know, maybe this thing's going to pull back and do nothing between now and the end of the year. So I said, let's put out a low risk, $1,224 in margin trade. And I can handle this thing down. And at the time, 112 looked like pretty good support. Well, if you look at this, I'm gonna push forward to the low, which was on October 13th. So let's go to October 13th. And you can see where this trade would have been. Um, on October 13th, I was underwater. And it was decision time. Well, do I stay with this trade? I'm down $321 at this time. But then, you know, listening to the heartbeat of the market, it looks like we're going to probably have a rally into the end of the year. So what I did is I hung in there. And so I'm going to go to live mode and I'll show you where this trade is right now. You say, well, you haven't done much of anything yet. Um, Theta is starting to come out. Um, it's now up 5%. But what I did back i put a hedge on this thing and i'll show you where that hedge went in i'm gonna go to this so on september 17th this thing was starting to pull back on us you know back in september and i decided i'm gonna hedge my december trade so what i did is i put another asymmetric fly on under the market it was a 264 knowing that I can roll these tails up and I was willing to have be under the expiration line because if you combine these two trades, and I know I'm probably going in more detail you want, but this is the way I think. No, that's um, fine. I looked at this trade and I said, okay, I want to hang into this. I've got grease for pullback back to where the recent low might've been. 
down to 110. I've got $2,400 in margin on this thing, but my upper expiration line is profitable. And what I decided is that I would put this thing on, on this date. And I'll just show you where we are now. Okay, so if I go to live mode on my hedge, well, it expires on Friday and it's small, but I've got $390 in margin because I've been roll. I took off a fly. Remember, this is a two, two, six, four. I took one off and I might even rolled up the tails. I've got very low risk in this trade. I'm guaranteed to make at least 14% of the upside. And I'm hoping for a pull that I can make it get a pin. Now, if you combine these two trades, ah, let me pull that up again. You can see that come Friday, I mean, in order to get underwater on the total trade together, I have to be below 110. So bottom line is what I love about trade miner and going out in time is I choose high probability trades. I put them on and then I may hedge them with stuff, you know, a month or two ahead of time to protect that trade. So again, more detail than you need probably, but it just gives you an idea of what you can do when you have a tool that just says, you know, there's hundreds of trades out there, but where do you find them? Yeah, Once you see them, then you start. Can, you know, it's kind of like, what's in your cupboard? Hell, hell, I don't know what I'm going to cook tonight. But then I start pulling up a recipe and say, hey, wait a second, I can do this, this, and this with the food I've got here. And Trade Miners basically gives me an idea. So, absolutely. Well, very cool, Rick. So now I should let Travis, I don't want to waste all the time. Travis, you got to tell everybody about what's going on here. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Rick. That's that was a great uh, introduction to the trade miner. So what we've done with Tom and uh, his following is we've set up some some special pricing. Normally for stocks, futures, and forex, um, we sell this uh, trade miner pro for uh, three hundred and ninety four dollars, um, and that's includes a year of data. Uh, what we've done for Tom and his following is we've dropped it to 250 for a year. And that, again, is for stocks, futures, and Forex. Um, Tom's going to be sending out some information to everybody. So if it's something you want to take a look at, uh, we'd be happy to, to have you on board. If you have any questions, I'll post my information there um, here in the chat so that you guys could reach out to me. But if there's any questions, please uh, feel free to, to send them in. Yeah, I posted it in the link. It's just uh, airmere.com slash trade miner. That'll redirect you to the page with the discounted price. And um, I mean, it's, uh, I forget what, 250 So for a year. Yeah, so one year. So that's like just 20 bucks a month. So it's uh, hard to go wrong with that. Yeah, and then uh, to renew it every year after is 149 So um, you can definitely uh, get your money's worth pretty quick with a, with one trade so absolutely this is a i think this is a real bargain i mean i'm sorry but i'm pitching in here i in fact i started out with just basic trade miner and i actually talked to joe here was it joe traps i think it was joe yeah yep. about a month and a half ago i said i want to upgrade <laughs> i mean it's like i wanted to get the back to that's the other thing too travis what you should emphasize is the fact that you can back test the your ideas going back to what 2012 or 2010 yeah you can say what would have if i'd done this this and this what would have happened you know choosing particular dates going through the good and the bad part of the market do you think you could maybe show the back testing real quick yeah do you want to do it joe or do you want me to uh go ahead rick okay let me um okay let me pull this up and i gotta see which just give me a second here i gotta figure out which uh settings i'm on i gotta make sure okay um the thing with back test data you can't overload your system. You have to create maybe small pockets of, of, of trades or of stocks. So it'll pull that data and then you can combine them at the end. So I'm going to go back. Let me just pull something. Let's go back uh, to 2019 and we'll just arbitrarily, somebody just tell me what you want to, uh, what you want to do in terms of what date, somebody give me a date. I mean, if you give me, if you give me a March of last year, it's going to look absolutely crappy. 
but let's you, just uh, randomly August pick. of 2008. Okay, August of 2008. I don't know if we can get to 2008. Can we, Joe? Oh, I mean, probably not. Sorry. Okay. I went too far back. Yeah. Let's uh, try 2012. There you go. Just a random one. Which one? 2012. 2012. Okay. I'm going to look at 2012. What month do you want? Uh, August. It's my anniversary. So I'll just. Okay. We'll August. do August. And are you guys seeing my screen? Here we are. Yep. Okay. So what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm looking at my settings are on one of my options, which is 256 trade. Okay. 256 symbols. We should be able to pull this up. I'm going to look at 30 to 60 days because that's what I normally do. And so let's go ahead and search it. Sometimes it could take a little time, depending on how big a file you have. I'm hoping this doesn't take more than five minutes. <laughs> but what's amazing about this, and again, I'm not trying to be a pumper, but for the price of what you pay, it's like a one-time fee, and then you're paying for the data every year. Isn't that right, Travis? Yep. And I mean, data alone, I mean, this it's updated every night, the data, right? Yeah, it is, because you, you get your updated yep. uh, portfolio. I should have probably used a smaller scan, guys. Well, I'm mean, thinking through it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm scanning 256 stocks over that period of time. So just think it has to look between, it looks at the month of August over 256 stocks. And it's looking for things that are 90% probable or profitability between 30 and 60 days. Um, that's trading days going forward. So getting there yeah so and tom the other thing is i know you have slack channels i think for other groups is that correct uh yeah we have some public slack channels and then the trade alert services have their own private channels okay because with this i know that there, once people, if they get into this, there's so many ideas you can come up with, so many strategies in terms of how you trade it. And maybe periodically, we want to have a conversation about this. You know, yeah, we could probably set up a uh, either a forum or a Slack channel. I think only about half the people that sign up for Trade Alert Services use Slack, so it's not everybody. Yeah. I tend to get overwhelmed with too much information because during my trading day, it's kind of like my own peaceful moment. And I don't really want to talk to a lot of people. I think that's where forums work better, especially for options traders. And we try like live chat, like a trading room kind of thing, but right. it's not what the most of the people here do. So it's more, you know, slower paced and the forum idea works a lot better. Yeah. Okay. So, now, here's, what, here's my process. I'm looking at this, and it came up with 83 results. Now, what I will do is I will screen this thing and say, you know what? I don't like anything under four on the, on the score. Um, but what I will do is I'll come over here to this column where win rate, and if I see a 100% win rate, um, I'll choose that one. But right now, I'm going to just, this was a very small one. So the month of August of, what would we say, 2000. 12 what? 2012 okay so what i would do and i'll just stretch it one bit i'll go to this i'll just just to get a few of them i'll just stake them down to three then what i would do is i would add this to step two and then i go over to step two to the neural network and you'll see it up here and actually you can see what this happened on this if you got into tiffany on august something and exited September 18th. That was 43 days, calendar days in the trade. Again, this is $5,000 at risk by buying it at the open on August 7th, 2012, you made $675. Procter & Gamble, $259. Monster Beverage, even though it had a higher probability, you lost $775. And then um, Realty Income, you made $20. And you made 772 and you sold 175. So I don't know what, let's just move this over now to um, the portfolio screen. So there wasn't a big selection at that time. There must have been something going on. Let me just move this over to add to the pick list. This moves it to the portfolio. I got to 
get rid of these over here. Hold on a second. Uh, remove, remove all. Oop, what did I do? Oh, I screwed up. Okay, I'm going to move these over to the pick list portfolio. And I have to move these now down to, to portfolio. And it says that if you would have traded these guys, okay, you see where I'm saying down here, this little screen? Yep. Okay, you can look at expected risk levels. If you wanna get into that, this, this is the, the 2012. Okay, so what it would have done, if you would have closed these trades, you would have made $779. And how many trades are there? One, two, three, four, five. Was there five trades, I think? Yeah, so you're- Wait, I, did, I need to add one more. There's one up here I didn't add. No, there's not, that's all of them. So on those trades, you would have made 779. And you so would have five trades- 20, 25K of margin. Yeah, and you made 800 bucks. Essentially, seven hundred dollars. That's what about three percent. Yeah. yeah, and that's basically, you know, between uh, calendar days. And again, you would be in other trades at the same time, more than likely, because they overlap, you know, month to month. Yeah, I see. One expired was done on the twenty sixth of September. Others are done in November, or October. So yeah. Yep. Now, how do you know when the end date is? How is that oh. calculated? That's Travis. Sorry, the, the end date down here. Yeah, and these back tested ones like start on August 7th and then September 18th, or where does the September 18th come from? Yeah, so that's part of what it's doing when it goes back through um, and doing all the calculations. It's touching uh, millions of data points to find uh, what's gonna be the most uh, profitable uh, during that time. Um, and find those trends. If you go back to the, the search on step one, he put the days, uh, how many days he wants that trend to be. Um, so what it's doing is it's going through and finding in between those, that time frame of, of what's going to be the most profitable trade. And is there an actual trend that lasts? That's why the calculation takes so long. Is I mean, it's going through millions of data points to find what's going to the optimal time frame. So when you're back testing, it's calculating the end date before you go actually look at the data. It does, I, I mean, you're not cherry picking it. You're not saying, oh, well, it had a high on the September 18th, so we'll end it there. It was calculated um, based on the August 7th data. Yeah, correct. And then if you're doing one live, like say you did one today, it, it'll calculate when it's supposed to end. Yep, yep, but based off of the historical data, yeah. So it's going back and it's, it's finding when the optimal end date is gonna be. Okay, I got you. Now, Tom, I don't know if we have time, but I could actually look at that monster beverage, which is our big loser. Yeah. And I could actually go into Option Net Explorer through back testing and see, it, without biasing myself, put a trade on that I might have put on. Sure. Um, yeah, we have a few minutes. Yeah, give me a second here. I'm going to go and I'm going to build it. It's going to be a, a November, probably a November monthly. Well, they're actually only showing September for in that period. So I'll put a December on. And what I'm going to do, um, December 12th, 845. Okay, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, new share. Sure. Uh, here we go. I think this is it. So Monster had a, a fairly significant loss. Do you see my screen? I do. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to look. See, there. it looks like it's a November, November 7th options expiration. We, at this period of time, we had September and December options. There was nothing in November, October at that time. So what I may do in situations like this is I may go ahead and I don't like going out more than a month, you know, if I don't have options, but I, I may extend it. So I'd go out to, let's say, December. And just for funsies, let's do a, a straight vertical and see where we'd, how we would have handled this trade. And let's do a five wide. And, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, that's a, nice profitability, um, but more than likely, let me show you what I would have done um, since I like doing this. I would have probably done something like this, an asymmetric fly. And what I do is I look at my UAL, UEL and you say, well, there's not a, not a lot of money being made at the top. 
So you can modify it and say, let's try going up a little higher and, and let's just see. I, I really like flies. Now, this is what I like about this. I'm risking $445 in margin and I've got a lot of room above the tent. And, you know, if I lose $445, I mean, there's plenty of time. I'm a hundred, oh, that's 130 days. That doesn't make sense. This is the wrong month, you guys. Um, but no, that's not, that's right. That is the right. It's 130 days. Normally, like I said, I don't like going out that far. So what I did, I would do is I would enter this trade. I'm going to go ahead and put this in trade minor hedge or test. And I'm just going to enter this and just say test monster. And now I'm going to go to December 7th because that's where it wanted to be, right? So I'm going to go to December 7th on this trade. We'll see how bad a shape we'd be in on this trade. <laughs> See that, Tom? Yep. What that tells me, and more than likely, I would have modified this trade along the way. I may, have, I may even on an update added call credit spreads to, you know, what I'm talking about make like a, a asymmetric condor, iron condor. Right. Mm -hmm. But okay, remember, Trade Miner said at December seventh, you lost seven hundred seventy-five dollars if you'd have bought five thousand dollars worth this thing. What I'm telling you right now on this trade, and I didn't cherry pick it, we're up. And I'd be milking this trade now. I'd be, it's called milking the wings. I'd be rolling up puts and rolling yeah, down. Flattening puts. your delta and Absolutely. protecting your profit. Yep. And more than likely, Tom, I would, since we were 130 days out, I would have put a hedge on this trade, probably another fly below the market. It could have been a symmetrical fly where my UAL would give me a, $60 loss, but I could work the pin on the back, on the other, on the hedge fly. I know this is getting more complicated than most people want to hear, but. Well, and even uh, if you're using just simple verticals like uh, Scott yep. does over stratagem trade, you know, you get a little profit and then you sell another spread against it, hedge off all the risk and create like a riskless butterfly or condor right. kind of shape. Yep. Well, I love the advanced risk. Yeah, advanced risk reversals, I love them, where I'll put on a uh, call debit spreads at the money and then sell a bunch of put credit spreads way below one standard deviation. And I actually do that a lot. Um, you know, then, then you flip them and so you're in the trade for nothing. You know what I'm saying, Tom? Right, yep. yep. So anyway, we're getting, we're running out of time. Is there any, anything in the questions in the chat, Tom, that need to be addressed? Uh, just one thing we were um, talking about, uh, Bud asked that the, or said that the back test picks the highest profitable exit date, but in reality, it's hard to get out at the exact highest profit point. Cause yeah, I mean, nobody knows when the, the high actually is, but um, it's definitely giving you good probabilities and bias of where you can, you know, set your trades up. I think that's important with most trades. You have to have an opinion of where you think the market's going. And this definitely gives you an edge on that. You know, I, I, exactly. I tend to be kind of cheap about where I put my money. I mean, I tend to get buy Starbucks and I shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is a better deal than going to Starbucks for me. <laughs> yeah. Definitely 20 bucks a month. Yeah. I can make my own coffee and hang on trade miner, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. So, well, all right. Well, I think that's it for the questions. Uh, any last uh, re-attacks before we wrap it up? I think uh, Rick, you did a great job. So thank you. Really appreciate it. Well, and, I appreciate uh, thank you, guys. Rick. And, and thank you, Tom, for allowing us to come and, and be a part of this. I, we really appreciate it. And if anybody has any questions, I put my email in the chat. Feel free to email me uh, with any questions that you might have. And um, I'm happy to, to answer and, and help out in any way that I can. And there was one question, somebody only trades stocks and not futures and Forex. And I think you said you could also set one up for them for only stocks. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. We can, if they were looking just for stocks, we can definitely do that. Okay. Or great. just for futures or just for Forex, whatever it is and that they're trading, we can do it. Travis, the pro version of stocks is the way to go if you're going to do just yep. stocks. Yep. And that's, that's where we're giving the deal off is uh, with, the, with the pro version. And we can do it for any three of them. So. You guys are all getting a better deal than me. 
<laughs> we need to cancel and resubscribe here. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. It's it's already paid for itself for the next 10 years, I think, you know. Oh, there we go. And Alan, I just put the link in the chat. It's just airmere.com slash trade miner. All right. With that, uh, thanks very much, guys, and everybody who attended. Really appreciate it. And uh, the software looks really good. The the 20 bucks a month is hard to argue against for what you're getting. So a really nice product. And uh, Travis, thanks for uh, for showing it to us. And Rick, for bringing it to my attention that we can all benefit from it. So really appreciate it, guys. Great. Thank yeah, you, guys. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. You too. See you, Rick. See you, Travis.